Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we will cover Data Lake House. Data Lake House is a concept that combines elements of both Data Lake and Data Warehouse to bring us the best of both worlds. It aims to provide a unified platform for storing, managing, analyzing both structure and unstructured data. The term is often associated with the evolving landscape of big data and analytics. We have covered Data Lake in AWS and on-premise. I will leave the link to both of the videos in the description below. Data Lake House improves upon the capabilities of Data Lake. It brings features such as schema evolution, transaction consistency, and time travel and rollback amongst other features. Like databases, Data Lake Houses support schema evolution allowing changes to the data structure without requiring a full rewrite of the data set. This is crucial for handling evolving data sources and changing business requirements. Data lakehouses often implement transactional capabilities to ensure data consistency. This means that write operations are atomic and the system maintains a consistent state even in the face of failures or partial updates. Time travel enables reproducible queries that use exactly the same table snapshot or lets user easily examine changes. Version rollbacks allows user quickly to correct problems by resetting the table to a good state. We will build on the data lake concept and introduce new technologies that transform the data lake to a data lake house. Previously, we have built a data lake with MinIO a compatible S3 storage layer. We'll utilize this to stage our data. For the catalog, we have used Hive Metastore that allowed us to map S3 files to the tables that enabled us to use Query Engine to analyze S3 data. This is great as we can query files containing structured and unstructured data. However, this catalog does not have the capabilities to handle schema changes or to ensure the data is in a consistent state. We had to maintain and update the files in S3. In this iteration, we replaced the Hive Metastore with Project Nessie. It works with Apache Iceberg table format. A table format allows us to manage the data files in our data lake and brings in the data management capabilities, such as the ability to perform DML, time travel, and rollbacks. It forms the basis of a data lake house architecture. Nessie holds the reference to the current metadata file. Changes to the content of the data lake are recorded in Nessie as commits without copying the actual data. Nessie catalog brings in the asset guarantees to any transaction to the iceberg table. Therefore, user get a consistent view of all the data. Processing engine for this specific demo would be Dremio. We'll use it to create iceberg tables and do various DML operations on the data files. All of our raw data files will be stored in the data lake, which is an S3 bucket hosted on min.io. We'll use Docker Compose to set up the data lake house with the above tech stack. Docker Desktop is a prerequisite for this. Let's create the Docker containers for S3, Nessie, and Dremio. If you're running this for the first time, it'll take some time to download the images from Docker Hub. And once the images are downloaded, Docker will create and start the containers. We'll need to configure our S3 and catalog within our processing engine, Dremio. For S3, we need to log in and create keys. Login credentials are defined in the Docker Compose file. So let's grab those and we'll log into min.io on the following URL and generate the access and the secret key. Once the keys are generated, we can either copy them or download them for later use. While we are here, let's create few buckets. One to hold the data files and another to house the catalog schema. We'll call the bucket for the files data lake and the catalog bucket we'll call it warehouse. In the data lake bucket, let's import a folder with a CSV file in it. We'll import this data into an iceberg table later on. Let's launch and configure Dremio next. 
on the first launch, we'll need to create a user and provide details along with a password. Once we are logged in, we'll add an S3 bucket as a source in the Dremio. First is the S3 bucket that stores the data. So under sources, we select the S3, provide it a name, and we'll supply our access and the secret key. And let's uncheck the encrypt connection checkbox. In the advanced options section, we define few connection properties. Make sure the CTAS format is set to iceberg. We define the S3 endpoint and set it to min.io. In addition, we set the style access and S3 compatibility to true. Finally, we provide our bucket's name. Let's go ahead and save these changes. Upon success, we'll see our data lake bucket as a source in Dremio. Next, we add the Nessie catalog as a source. We define a name for this and provide the Nessie's URL. The authentication type is none. Under storage, we provide the same details such as our access and secret key along with the connection properties. However, our root path will be the warehouse bucket. With these changes, let's save the Nessie's source. And if this is successful, you'll see Nessie's catalog as a source in Dremio. We have our data lake bucket and Nessie's catalog as our sources. If we click on the data lake, we see the folder. And once we navigate to the next folder in it, we see the data files. We select the file and on this screen, we set the format, delimiter, and the escape character. We make sure our data looks correct before closing this window. I see that our column headers are not correct, so I'll extract the column names. This looks much better. Let's save the changes. This redirects us to the query engine. We can run the query against our files here. I'll execute the query to see the data. This query displays the data in the file. Our file changes color, and if we expand it, it tries to infer schema details from the file. However, it's not accurate. We'll fix it with the iceberg table. Let's navigate to the Nessie's catalog and create a table. We can switch the context in the SQL pane. Once we're in the Nessie's catalog, I'll paste in a table DDL. We are creating a table called sales in the Nessie catalog. We define the data type for each column. Let's go ahead and execute the script to create the table. We can go ahead and select from it. It is empty at the moment and it'll take a few seconds before it appears under the catalog. Now we copy the S3 data in this table using the copy command. We specify the file location and the file name. Once we execute this, it returns rows inserted and it'll display the number of records we have inserted. In this case, it is 60,000. Upon querying the table, we see the data in this table now and our date column is picked up as date. Since this catalog allows us to execute DML operations, we can perform update and or delete operations on this table. Let's go ahead and uh, look at a few examples. Let's put a where clause on this select where product subcategory name equal caps. If we run this, this only displays data for caps. Now we run an update statement against this table. Let's update the product subcategory name to AWC caps. Now if we run the same select again, we should see the product category name values as AWC caps. Great, this verifies that we can run DML operations on our data using this catalog. Also, we can see the changes we are making as commits on the left of the SQL pane. We can load any of these changes and revert back. To check the schema evolution, let's delete the index column. This is the column A in our dataset. After this change, our select should no longer display this column. We can also update the column names with an alter statement. We can also create views based on this data to target specific rows. For example, we can create a view for the US. We can check the table history since Nessie's catalog keeps track of all the changes and it has a pointer to the current state of the table, we can check the table history and see the changes in this table 
at various stages. With the help of the snapshot, we can travel back in time and see how this table looked at a particular time. In addition, we can see the files associated with this table. Apache Iceberg brings the database functionality to the data lake. We can execute SQL DML statements against our data lake files. It brings transactional consistency and schema evolution to the data lake world. Feel free to explore further on Apache Iceberg. In the next session, we'll explore branching and merging with Nessie. This is all on Data Lake for now. I hope you enjoy the session. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.